like, especially as I've heard from Book of Mormon, there's just so much focus on Christ. Um, hard, hard to kind of draw some comparisons with the different type of churches out there because everyone's just a little bit different. Uh, to me, though, like, if we got the focus on Christ, like, that's the way that we got to be, be focused on. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Saints Unscripted. I'm David. I'm Cam. And this is David Boyce from 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. I said that right. You got it. Good. Perfect. You've got a YouTube channel. You've got a book. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, uh... I'm excited that you're here today because you 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 have some weird experiences. You've just been kind of everywhere. Maybe maybe before yeah. we get into that though, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what the heck you're doing in Utah, and about this project that you've been working on for yeah. a while. So uh, my name is David. So uh, what I do is I go to a different church each week as part of a spiritual challenge that's going on for one year. So I try and do churches of all different kinds. Uh, Catholic, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Quaker, and one that has been very curious to me has been the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So That's I'm in Salt Lake City. I like, uh, want to see what a Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints church is like in the heart of LDS. Yeah. yeah. Right on. So uh, why did you start doing this? Like what, what, was, what was the catalyst? Yeah. Uh, so the first time uh, I, I had a falling out with my lifetime church. So what I want to do is, like, I, I kind of started falling away from church. I was having my own kind of spiritual faith crisis. crisis. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I tried the, the spiritual but not religious path, and that just wasn't working. Mm. But, like, I had this whisper, like, 52 churches in 52 weeks. It was really strange. It's like, is that Holy Spirit? Is it not? I don't know, but that was just stuck in my head. So finally I got, I built up the courage. It's like, all right, I'm going to try a different church and do it for a commitment of one entire year just to try and find a different church to attend. Well, the more I did it, the more of an adventure it became and the more I wanted to kind of see what other churches are there. So I, I do all these different type of denominations, but then I also do like different interesting niche churches. Like what's a church like at a heavy metal rock church? Um, one I've done is a cowboy church, a biker church. And the more what? churches I've visited, yeah. That's cool. The more I visited, the more it's just like, how are other people, how is God's hand reaching out to other people? And yeah. the more I've done this, the more humbled I've become. Just because it's like, what is out there? How are people worshiping Jesus Christ in different settings, in different environments? How many have you visited now? Oh, boy. Um, I've documented close to 100 now. So the first time I did 52 and 52 is about seven, eight years ago. We've got to change the YouTube name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so I'm doing this current one. So uh, I just finished up my week 47. So I'm wrapping up pretty soon. Okay. But before I, I wrapped it up, I, I need to come out to Salt Lake City. I need to see what this was all about. Okay. So, so that's interesting because if you go on your YouTube channel, the top two most popular videos are two videos about Latter-day Saints. Yes. Why? It's, in, it's interesting. Think? So uh, the very first time I, I went to an LDS ward, I knew nothing about LDS. I didn't know who Joseph Smith was. I didn't know what golden plates were. I had just learned about Moroni. Mm -hmm. This was all about an hour or two before I walked in my first LDS ward. Mm -hmm. So I just sat, sat down. Like, what's going to happen? I didn't know what to expect. I'd heard Latter-day Saints were very kind. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, okay, give me a break. You're from the Midwest. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Midwest, Midwest, nice. So I just sat down, just, all right, let's see what a service is like. I had uh, two members walk up to me, extremely kind, open conversations. I'm like, wow, this is a really, this is a really amazing church to have this type of family type of atmosphere. So I attended the sacrament meeting, and it was just so bizarre to me because families were together. Like, kids were, like, crying, and it was like, I'm not used to seeing this in other type of Protestant type of churches I've been a part of. What, what, sorry to stop you there, but yeah. did, are they not in families in other... Uh, several, some are. A, a lot of the bigger ones nowadays, like, um, the, the kids kind of go to their church. Okay. And then the adults kind of, like, this motivational type of sermon. Okay. Gotcha. So, um... So I, I've kind of found it interesting where it's like the family example is right there during the church service. Hmm. So um, 
I got talking with another gentleman again. He passed me off to the missionaries, and I had so many questions. <laughs> so many questions. And they spent about an hour and a half with me, just answering all my questions. I was on information overload, but at the same time I walked out, I'm just like, I've never been part of a service where there was just so much conversation, so much curiosity. And that was going to be the end of it. That was going to be the end of my LDS experience. Uh, but then I started having spiritual coincidences kind of pop up in my life. And like, okay, I'm going to go for my week 13 visit to another LDS church. I've been talking with missionaries at my local ward. At first, I wasn't going to do anything with it, but I'm like, I kind of need to. So your first experience yeah. was a ward in Wisconsin. Yep. Yeah. So then they passed me off to the missionaries uh, where I was closest in Wisconsin, went to that service, and it was the same thing. It was just very, very close-knit, family-based, and uh, like it was just like, what is going on here? This is really amazing. It's beautiful. So um, I had to get away from LDS Salt Lake City kind of based because I want to do different type of churches. So then I started branching off to, okay, what are other Book of Mormon believing type of restoration branches? Hmm. So uh, the Community of Christ, the Church of Jesus Christ based in Pennsylvania, and then the Stringites. And as, Wisconsin. Which, and I was watching your Faith and Beliefs videos on the Stringites. And, like, same thing. Like, just amazing type of people. Hmm. And it's just like, okay, I, I need to come to Salt Lake City. I need to understand what it's like here in terms of how the, the wards work, how does general conference, how does that work? Uh, just a, a huge curiosity about this. It sounds like you travel a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm imagining that you're not finding all of these churches just in your local community in Wisconsin. So right. you just drive everywhere? Uh, yeah, so during the weekends, like, I, I got a job. Like, I'm busy. I need to yeah. be focused on that during the week. So, But for the weekend, like, I'll just get in my vehicle and just start driving eight, nine, ten hours a day, do the church service, and then drive back. Wow. So, so you came out for general conference? Yes, yes. How did that go? Um, so it, it's, it's fascinating to me, um, especially with the protesters, mm. when you're on outside. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure everyone kind of talks about that. Um, as I've, I've talked with my missionaries, like we look, you know, one of the first things that they talked to me about was First Nephi 8, like Lehi's vision, Iron mm -hmm. Rod. Mm -hmm. And it, it was interesting to me because... Like you're walking in and it's almost like you have these barricades, like these these rods right there. And then I think in the, the dream of dreams, the vision that Lehi has, like you have all these scoffers, these mockers on the side. And it was like, are this are you trying to recreate first Nephi? Wow, here? I've never made that connection. Yeah. Like it That's was just insane. so strange to me as I am kind of learning about this and just trying to understand different faiths, different type of denominations. And it was just like walking in, it's like it's all it's all like staged. How? We're just re yeah. yeah. Like is this staged? Like this is they're all so paid strange. actors. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, very very strange with with that. Uh, but yeah, well, inside the choir. Oh my goodness, that was amazing. Um, Which session did you go to? Uh, I went to the morning session and then I did the afternoon sessions on Saturday. Mm. Okay, so yeah. two sessions on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Cool. So. A lot to take in, so it's like I'm still kind of processing everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reverence for President Nelson when he walks in, um, I'm like, why is everyone standing? It's like, yeah. oh, just that kind of blew me away. I've never seen that for for any individual before. Mm -hmm. It's impactful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was. It was something I'd never seen before. Yeah. So what did, uh, any thoughts on the actual session? Was it, was it, was it boring? Did you find it boring? Me, like I was, I was kind of understand, I was trying to, to be a sponge, kind of take everything in. Mm -hmm. So like I, there were some distractions that I saw in there. Uh, but overall, um, like the, the first talk, I, I don't remember. Gary Stevenson? I, that's it. Yeah. He quoted N.T. Wright. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a uh, evangelist type. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like. What is going on here? Like, <laughs> does anyone else know who N.T. Wright is here? Because it's like I've heard him, his name brought yeah. up so often. So um, I heard his name and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. He's not a member. That's cool. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. So, yeah, just very interesting. Hmm. Tell me a little bit about the similarities and the differences that you've seen. Like, what have the common threads been mm -hmm. at the churches that you visited? And maybe what was, 
What did you like? What did you not like about your experience with the LDS church in relation mm-hmm. to those? Hmm. Well, let me let me think about that. I think with the big thing that I, I've taken away from LDS is just the focus on Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I think that was something that uh, there's a misconception on a lot of the times. And, like, especially as I've heard from Book of Mormon, there's just so much focus on Christ. Um, hard, hard to kind of draw some comparisons with the different type of churches out there because everyone's just a little bit different. Uh, to me, though, like, if we got the focus on Christ, like, that's the way that we got to be, be focused on. You mentioned that you had a falling out with your original church. Could you go into a little more detail about that? whole situation what mm-hmm. maybe prompted you to start this journey? yeah so yeah with, with the falling out like there, there are certain things where uh, it just wasn't uh fitting um there's a lot of different types of things i was seeing like for corruption standpoint um but i think the, the biggest concern i had was um like so many so many people that grew up within the church were falling away from it and I was falling away from it. So from my standpoint, like I noticed like as a millennial, like I was becoming a statistic. My generation was leaving the church. And what do you do about that? There wasn't really anything to, to bring us back. So with the 52 churches in 52 weeks experiment, it's like, all right, well, let me like, just because you may have fallen away from your church doesn't mean you need to go with a direct opposite and become atheist or go in that different type of direction. There's other types of churches. There's other types of viewpoints out there. And the more that I've seen from different churches, the more humbled I've been by it, just to see what else is all out there. So, so are you, are you, is part of this process, like you actively looking for a church to associate with first time? Yes. Because we got a font yeah. in the back. We can just <laughs> wrap this up real quick for you. No, I'm just kidding. Did everyone see that? Because I will not be doing it again. Uh, for, first time, yes. Yeah. Uh, this time, uh, no. Like more I'm, curiosity. More curiosity. More, especially as uh, social media has advanced. Because the first time I was writing about it. This time with YouTube. Because the problem with doing 52 churches in 52 weeks the first time is I couldn't stop talking about it. Hmm. Just years later, it was just that much of a spiritual adventure. Like often in the Bible, it's it's so much about men going out for an adventure to find not just themselves, but also to find God as well. So you see that with Abraham. You see that with Moses and the Israelites. You see that even with Jesus, 40 days, 40 nights. Hmm. Even with, uh, as I'm learning about the Book of Mormon, you see that with First Nephi, or in First Nephi with uh, Lehi and Nephi and everyone kind of going out. Leaving what's comfortable and going to, exp- yeah. Right, right. So I think, especially for young men, and that, this is where I found the missionary component so strong, is with missionaries, like you're finding adventure. Like you're putting your faith into this different type of world that you're not used to. So you're, again, you're finding yourself, but you're also finding God in the process. And you feel like this sure. journey re-sparked your faith, rekindled your desire to be closer to God. Yeah. 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 The way I kind of term it is like for me, and especially when you do this adventure, like you have, like there's a fire inside of you. Like, like you feel like Shadrach, Meshach, and Bendigo, like on the inside, in the inside, right. Not on the outside, (laughs) inside. So that's where the the exciting component can really come in. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, um, you were surprised by our focus on Christ. Mm -hmm. One of the main items of pushback we get from the Protestant world is, hey, you guys believe in a different Jesus. Do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that? Why? It's tricky because it's like there's so many different doctrines. Yeah. Um, It it was interesting because the first time I went to the LDS uh, Visitor Center in Independence, Missouri, Mm -hmm. I walk in and you see the, the LDS... Jesus Christ logo statue. Mm-hmm. And like, I think there's like a little bit of an apostle inside of all of us. Like for me, I've always kind of seen myself a little bit like Matthew. Like I went to school originally for tax accounting. Like I'm sorry. I'm, I'm documenting <laughs> stuff. I know, right? <laughs> like I'm documenting my church trips, like very much like Matthew. But then with, with LDS, like I come in and you know what the first thing I'm looking at as I'm talking to the senior missionary, 
I'm looking at the hands on the statue, mm -hmm. like the nail marks, and suddenly I'm like, like I'm kind of like a Downing Thomas here. Mm -hmm. And Downing Thomas gets a bad rap in the Bible, but no, like he is trying to examine this. And that's where I kind of find with LDS, I'm examining this. Like I'm looking at the nail marks. I'm looking for Jesus Christ on this. So to me, like there's a fascination with LDS because I'm in this different role trying to understand it, which is very unique and it's something I never would have imagined before. Whereas before you were kind of just strictly an outside observer, and now you've kind of immersed yourself a little bit more in the cult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You come to general other, conference. It's, it's a, <laughs> yeah. Other churches, you know, I, I go for one time, I see it. I try and understand it for a week. LDS. I'm like, there's so much here. Like what is everything going on here? So it's just been much more curiosity that I've been having on this. Awesome. Curious and curious. Would you say that you have seen God uh, in the Latter-day Saint faith? Hmm. I think I, I see the fruits. Okay. That's the biggest thing. Because I see the behavior, I see the Christ-like um, reception to even me. Like, even as I've been doing 52 and 52, um, I at first I was taking a, a very much consumer-based approach to everything. Like, what's in it for me? And then I, I started talking with Larry Saints who are reaching out to me on social media. Hey, you know, I love your channel. Um, we hope that we, you visit another LDS ward. You know, stuff like that. And I, I just see the kindness and the behavior and the Christ-like uh, demeanor that everyone has. And that has even, and not just with LDS, but the other uh, restoration type of branches that I've visited, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it's kind of fine-tuned the way that I do this, mm -hmm. because now it's like, how can I be a blessing to other people? How can I reach out and be as Christ-like as possible instead of me going in and being like, all right, you bless me. Right. How can I bless you? I appreciate that you're going at this, not with just curiosity, but with civility, love, appreciation, respect. Um, you've talked about your reception in the LDS church. How's the reception been to your channel and your journey in the other churches you visited? Has there been pushback? Has there been any sort of opposition? Uh, there, there's always a little bit of opposition because when you start talking about religion and faith, right? People are passionate. People are passionate. They, they're they're stakes are in the ground, um, so you kind of have to walk a fine line. Um, as I do this, like I'm trying to find the gold at, the, at every church that I go to. So, like if I I, I try and stay away from criticism so much mm -hmm. because I'm trying to more so understand what's the good. How are they trying to reach out? How are they trying to be Christ like in their own demeanor? So. I love that. And it's interesting because I feel like the world, I feel like the, 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 the mean people are getting meaner. But on the mm -hmm. flip side, those that are compassionate and empathetic are becoming more compassionate and empathetic. So yeah. it, it's so uh, refreshing to see people like you or, or Pastor Jeff mm -hmm. or Steve or these other non-Latter-day Saints that we've uh, interviewed come investigate our faith while disagreeing with it, but but looking at it through a compassionate eye. Right. Which is exactly what Christ taught. Yeah. 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 It's about representing Jesus well. So one of the questions I had is, um, were there any um, misconceptions that you ha had or had been taught uh, that were blown away when you actually visited uh, a Latter-day Saint service and started to get to know our faith a little bit more? Yeah. Like, going in to my first LDS ward, like I mentioned, like, I didn't know who Joseph Smith, I didn't know anything. I had just understood just little tidbits, like, here and there. Because I'd heard of the Book of Mormon, I knew nothing about it. Um, like, I remember as a kid, I think I watched, like, I saw a commercial one time of LDS. And I think I asked my mom, it's like, well, we gotta go to this church. It's like, no, no, we don't want to go to that church. It's about time. Yeah. <laughs> so, I... Yeah, I, I just didn't uh, really have a, a firm understanding of anything about it. But I, I think, again, like other type of denominations, like I would go into some where I would have a big bias. Hmm. And it's it's really, to me, it's like I got to cut this down wow. and understand this and be more open-minded. That's impressive. That's hard to do. Um, yeah. Well, I, I don't think I have any more questions. I don't think so either. Do you, do you have any questions for us? 
Oh, man. <laughs> not, not to flip this around yeah. on you, but yeah. I know you're... You interview, well, yeah. you interview us. Okay. You didn't see that coming? So, one thing that Steve Pinecker often would mention is, what's your favorite Book of Mormon story? Mm. Mm. Mine is, mine's obscure. Mine's kind of random. Uh, there's one in the war chapters about a group of prisoners that are taken in a war. And um, this, this leader in the army or this spy runs into their camp and says, this army's coming, it's huge, we're in trouble. And because of the panic that that causes, mm -hmm. uh, the prisoners are able to escape. Some of them die and then the rest make it out. And I, I read that while I was on my mission. And it's stuck with me since. Um, just to not let what's going on outside make me lose all that I've already built up, right? I've, mm -hmm. I've gotten this position of strength and power. Um, and if I let fear take a little too much control, then I, all the work that I've put in will be lost. And so it's super random. I don't remember exactly <laughs> what story or what chapter it's in. I think it's late Alma. Um, but I've used that. I've referenced that more than a lot of the popular ones in making decisions for myself. Okay, like, I've got this new information. Is this something I actually need to worry about? Or can I just rely on what I already know, go back to the basics, especially with the church, right? Maybe there's some new piece of church history that pops up or whatever. Do I need to panic? Do I need to, or should I just calm down, compose myself, and then move forward? So. I also love the war chapters. I think it's partially just because we're dudes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we like the yeah. we like the tactics and the the overarching strategy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but um, I was asked that same question not too long ago on another video, and I might give a different answer now because it's always bouncing between things. But recently, we did a Book of Mormon reading challenge where we read the Book of Mormon in uh, like a couple months. Uh, we blew through it really fast. And there are advantages and disadvantages to that. But when last time we did that, what struck me in a way that hadn't struck me before is just the overarching theme of Christ in the Book of Mormon. Like when you read the whole book that quickly, you see that like they just don't shut up about Christ. <laughs> it's concentrated Jesus. In the best way. Oh yeah, like it's just constant Christ. And so that like that thread throughout the Book of Mormon is maybe it's cliche, but that's my favorite um story. Um and of course it it's not just, you know, Christ's uh life from the New Testament and whatnot, but it brings in a little bit more to the story mm -hmm. in Third Nephi when he comes and visits the people there which is the culminating event of the Book of Mormon. Have you read the Book of Mormon yet? I've been digging through it. So I did okay. skip ahead at one point to 3rd Nephi okay. to understand, okay, what happens here with Jesus Christ? That's uh, the Nephites. Part, yeah. yeah. But you don't know how, do you know what happens with the Nephites at the end of the book? I've, I've, yeah. Spoiler Spoilers. warning. Spoiler if you haven't read it, spoiler. I, I've, I've heard. Doesn't end. I, I it's haven't read it. Yeah. It's okay, not, okay. Yeah. 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 Not the happiest of endings. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that's your one question. You don't get asked. <laughs> Choose that. <laughs> um, but I guess wrapping up, do you have any final thoughts on this or any advice no. or wisdom for our listeners? Uh, to me, uh, yeah, just show up. Um, I think with today's generation, with church, um, you know, from a younger generation standpoint, this is a great opportunity, a big opportunity, uh, especially conversations like this, kind of building bridges. Pastor Jeff, Steve Pinecker, now I make my trip over here. Um, it's a really exciting time and, uh, you know, to see, to be invited to this, to talk with you guys, um, just very blessed. So thank well, you. What's the name of your book? Uh, 52 churches in 52 weeks. So same as the YouTube channel, same as the YouTube channel. Okay, we'll plug, we'll link both below so you can check them out. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, is there a good way to reach you? Uh, you can uh, reach out to me through Instagram. 52 churches in 52 weeks. Consistent that's branding. Always. Consistent. Yeah. Yep. So that's the easiest way for me. Okay. Visitors welcome, guys. It's on our sign. This guy actually did it. <laughs> Thank you for being here. It's, it's been great talking great to you. Appreciate, appreciate your, uh, your wisdom and your experiences as well. Thank you. Everyone, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.